All right, let's try the simple exercise to test what we've learned so far. Now let's say I have a simple variable called top and I've assigned the value 10 to it. Let's say this is line one in my JavaScript code. Now I create a function called foo and in that function, I create a var inner and I set the value as 20. And uh, immediately after that, I'm gonna print console.log of inner. So it prints the value of inner at the time. And this is just a function declaration. If I were to execute this, the script, right, line one to six, what would be the value that gets printed on the console? I'm gonna pause for a couple of seconds. Uh, so if you want, you can pause the video, think about this, answer the question before you unpause it. So a couple of seconds for you to think before I give you the answer. All right, so the answer is that nothing gets printed on the console if you were to execute this code. The reason is you have declared a function, but you haven't executed it. We need to call the function in order to execute it. That's where line five gets executed and something is printed. If you just execute this code as is, nothing gets printed on the console. All right, now let's say I execute the function by using foo, open, close, semicolon. Now foo gets executed, and now it's the value that gets printed on the console. Couple of seconds, and then I'll give you the answer. So pause the video if you need to. All right, the answer is the value that gets printed on the console is 20, because inner has the value 20, and then I'm printing inner, which is 20. So when foo gets called, lines four and five get executed, and then 20 gets printed on the console. All right, now let me add one more line here. I'm gonna add a line at the very top, which declares var inner equals 50 at the top, which is outside the function, okay? Now if I execute this code, if I execute foo, what is the value that gets printed on the console? The answer is still 20, because this is a global variable in the outer scope, because it's not in the function. And now this function foo creates a new scope and we have inner, which is in the scope of the function foo. And then when I'm printing console.log inner, it's still in the scope of function foo and it prints this value, not this one. Okay, so if I'm calling foo, it executes this and prints 20. However, if I were to take this line of code and um, put it over here, let's say I remove this, right? So we remove this and I execute this at line 10, what would be the value that gets printed on the console? This time, the value is 50, because this is outside the scope of foo. The scope of foo starts here and ends here. I'm accessing inner outside the scope of foo, so it's referring to the global variable, which is 50. So the value that gets printed is 50. All right, let's do one more quick exercise. Let's say I have a variable a equals 10 and I have a variable b equals 10, all right? And I have a console.log that prints a plus b. Now let's say I need this functionality to happen in the code, but I don't want there to be A and B global variables, right? I wanna be able to create these two variables and then add them up and print it on the console, but I don't want them to have global scope. So what would I need to do in order to restrict the scope of A and B? Think about this and I'll give you the answer in a couple of seconds. The answer is to wrap this in a function. Remember, JavaScript is function scoped. So if I don't want this to be a part of the global scope, I'll have to create a scope. And the best way to create a scope in JavaScript is to use a function. So all I have to do is wrap this in a function. So let's say I create a function, my function, and then I wrap the code inside that function. Now, A and B are local variables in this function scope. They are not going to pollute the global scope. Now, is this good enough? Is this going to achieve the same logic as the three lines of code that I started out with? Well, the answer is no, because while I've declared the function, there is nothing that's calling it, right? So I have the code here, which says a equals 10 and b equals 10, and then print console.log a plus b, but nothing gets printed on the console again, because my function is not being called. So in order to have this work, I have to call my function. And now with this, we are a, executing the code, like, you know, executing this functionality, 10 plus 10, like it was before, but we have also restricted the scope of A and B to this portion. Now, A and B is not available outside. It does not pollute the outside scope. Okay, now let's wrap up this video with this final exercise, which is kind of tricky. Now, let's say I do something like this. I have a var name equals Kaushik, and uh, now I create a function here called print greeting which takes a name as an argument, and then it prints console.log hello name. 
all right? And now I'm gonna call print greeting with the name Arthur Dent. Now, what is it that gets printed on the console? Now, there is a global name called, a global variable called name, with the value Kashik, and uh, I'm passing print greeting with a specific value and I'm accepting the parameter as name. Now, what would get printed on the console? The answer is, what gets printed on the console is, hello, Arthur Dent. Because what actually happens is even though there is a global variable called name, which has the value of Kaushik, what we are doing by accepting a method argument here is creating a new local variable of local scope called name, okay? A method argument is actually creation of a new variable. The variable name gets created in this function scope and gets assigned to the value which is passed to that function, which is Arthur Dent here, all right? So there is nothing that you can do in this function to access the global variable because this local variable kind of shadows it, right? So there's no way you can go to the top and access the global variable. Hopefully these uh, exercises kind of made you familiar with the idea of scopes in JavaScript. I encourage you to take the quiz on the site and I'll see you in the next tutorial.